They say worry, I know what it is. Word, my dude, what you play with shaking? I'm about to go to the west. I'm for Chris, what up, what up, what up, what up? How you doing? Everything is good, man. Let me just be clear. This is the infamous BG Knockout, the Sea World Podcast. How's everything going, my guy? Oh, uh, man, I can't complain. All is well. Man, first of all, let me just appreciate you for stopping by the show. I know you're a busy dude. Appreciate the love, man. I just want to get right to it. Um, Man, you, like, I'm a big hip-hop head, my man. And, like, I've been listening to hip-hop since I was a young boy. My Uncle Chris on the check-in. And me, I'm from, I'm from New York. Yeah, well, I've, I've always been like into the West Coast like type of style, and like I said, it's legendary to have you on the show. But you part of one of the most info, one of the most infamous times of hip hop beef and legendary hip hop history. Let's just be clear. Yeah, for sure. I want to know. I want to know who put the mic in your hand. Where you from? We know you from Compton. Um, yeah. Just tell us how it was how it was growing up in Compton. Who put the mic in your hand, etc. Well, you know, growing up in Compton. Uh, when I was young, it was it was really cool, man. It wasn't too much. It was it was drugs and gangs, but it wasn't as dangerous as it became later on once I became a teenager. So you know, um, okay. I went through a lot as a kid, man. I ended up in foster care. My mother went to prison when I was ten years old, and uh, so wow. I ended up in I ended up in a foster system, you know. And so during the time in the foster system, you know, like being taken out of my element or whatnot, my brother. My oldest brother, who is Drester, who actually wrote the real Compton City G's record with me and Easy, um, he was in he was in youth authority, like junior prison. You know, he was he had like five five years or whatever to do. And while he was in there, he discovered he discovered you know music or whatever. Because my mother was a poet. My mother come from the Panthers, all the same thing, like like how Pac was, you know, back in their day. They they affiliated with the Panthers. They affiliated with the Nation of Islam. All these different types of things. So my mother, you know, her one of her pastimes was poetry. So my big brother, being that he was the oldest and the first child, he kind of picked that up from her. So his poetry became, you know, hip hop once hip hop kind of like, you know, came into our lives or whatever. So he used to write me letters from 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 junior prison. And, uh, you know, he used to write the letters in the form of raps. You know what I mean? And he used to try what? to get me to. Yeah, he used to, he used to try to tell me to say them. And I would try to mimic them. And then, you know, like as time went on, I would pick it up. And then this is around the same time Easy e came out with Boys in the Hood when it was underground. It was just really known around L.A. It was in Compton, South Central, places like that. And being that we from that little small city, we, you know, we heard the tapes and whatnot. And so we kind of fell in love with hip hop. I say around like 1986. 
Okay. Right. You know what I mean? I was probably about like going on 11 years old. And, you know, that's pretty much what it was. And how I learned how to rap was I was I would mimic other people's raps. You know, I would mimic Boys in the Hood. I would mimic Big Daddy Kane. I would mimic KRS-One and all these type of people. And then yeah. I would replace their words with my own words. You know what I mean? And, until I started writing my own raps eventually. You know what I mean? Like that. Man, it, it's it's crazy because, like I said, I was like a young lad when um when when that song came out, and I remember like it's it's I always look at you guys like I wanted you guys to win because easy to be easy was like a small guy, but he was like a giant. And yeah, I he was. Relate, a, I can yeah. relate to that because I'm like a small guy, but I always felt like a giant. Um, yeah. But just, just tell the world like how you met Easy E, how that relationship started, and just the just the impact he's had on your life. Oh, for sure. So Easy, I met Easy really through some homeboys, some some older homeboys who kind of grew up. They grew up together. They used to hustle drugs, you know, when they were younger. You know what I mean? They was just at the age where they was like 14, 15, just at that age when crack came, crack, PCP, all these different things came. Um, they were old enough to hustle, you know what I mean? So they would be out there hustling, and eventually they started balling. So two of the homeboys who grew up with him, they, they eventually, you know, like around the early 90s, they wanted to transition from what they were doing into music. Um, and, and being easy was they homeboy, you know what I mean? What better hookup to have, you know? So they pulled up on our block one day and was like, you know, we heard you dudes rap. We heard y'all rapping and shit. We was like, yeah. My brother was fresh out of youth authority at the time. And uh, they told us to spit for him. We spit for him. And they was like, shit, we're going to take y'all to the studio. They didn't tell us with who. None of the, you know what I mean? So the next day they came, my brother was home. I wasn't there. My brother ended up going to the studio with Easy, making music and coming back later that night. And then he playing the tapes for me in the kitchen. Like, I'm like, damn, you was in the studio with Easy? He was like, yeah, we going tomorrow. You know what I mean? So the next day I was there. You feel me? So I stayed, went there the next day. We in the studio with Easy, and I'm just watching him. I'm like, man, we straight right here with this dude, man. Like, this is crazy. Like. Yo. I didn't even know how tall and short he was until that day, you know what I mean? Because TV make everybody look tall, you know? So pretty much that's how it happened. Um, I wasn't supposed to be on the record, but what happened was, like, they, they, they took the record from reel to reel down to down to tape, and the part that I rapped on, nobody knew how, the, how this beat got there, and so they didn't know what to do with it. Somebody had the suggestion that I go in the booth and try to get on it, and that's how I ended up on the record, you know what I mean? So it wasn't even planned. Yo, man, you had the most infamous line. It's the knockout. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's what, what people say. Like, where you, where you, where you get that line from? Just, it just, it just came out, bro. Like, what I did was, you know, I had no idea how the studio worked naturally because I'd never been in one for real. So, um, I had all these raps, you know, from from the time I was eleven. At this time, I was seventeen. So I had raps from eleven to seventeen that I had in my brain. So I'm in there saying all these raps, and, and and one thing somebody pointed out was like, they was like, none of them go with the topic of the song. You know, it's about all types of other shit. And then uh, we just kept smoking and drinking and smoking, and, and that, that 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 just came out of me, bro. Like, I just yelled it out, and they was recording it, and then they was like, they told me to come out the booth, write it down, you know, change some of the words and stuff like that, and that's how it came about. Listen, yeah. I'm a... I'm a I'm going to keep it a thousand with you. I just want to be clear. This is Say World Podcast. This is BG Knockout. Like, you're part of, like, hip-hop history. Yeah. If, if you're a hip-hop head, like, like I said, how do you how do you feel? How do you feel about that? Like, even right now, you you older. It's like, man. It's like, I, I know I know the history of that. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel when you're walking around and, and people know you're part of that infamous? It's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of surreal, bro. It's like, I understand. And I get it, but it's still, it's like, I be thinking, like, why me sometimes? Like, how did I luck up and get that opportunity? You know what I'm saying? And this is something I've been pursuing since a little kid. And then God finally gave it to me. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a trip, man. It's kind of trippy. I try not to take it for granted. And, you know, I just try to, you know, hold it and keep it for what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm truly grateful to have been a part of it, you know? Man, it's 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 crazy. I just want the world to understand like how big Compton was in hip hop though. Like, oh yeah, people don't like like I said I'm from New York right, and I understand how big the Bronx was. I understand how New York was, but like we looked at Compton like we thought Compton was like the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, no. Listen, we, no. We, I know. Men the mentality it is 
but the way it looked, like you would go to Compton, bro. It's, it's yeah. a middle class. It's a middle class trees. area. Yeah. You see the trees and everything, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> Price, yeah, we got way. horses, bro. We got horses, cattle. We got all type of shit over there. But it's the mentality of the people. The people think like the jungle. You know what I mean? And that's what made Compton so ferocious. It's a small little city, bro. It's only it's only ten square miles. But you don't. But who thinks that? Like you, like when you hear about when people hear about Compton, this is like word to mother. When people hear about Compton, they think about NWA. They think about BG Knockout. They think about all the legends from Compton. You would think it's like a big. Like I had no idea it was that small in size. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you know it's in, it's it's inside of Los Angeles County. Like Compton, Carson, Long Beach, South Central LA is all in Los Angeles County. The county of LA is really big, so it's there's several cities that make the county up. You understand what I'm saying? And Compton is just a small city in the in the middle of it all. It's called the hub city. The hub is like the center. Right, so Compton is in the center of, of Greater Los Angeles. You know what I mean? Like that's that, that's that, that's that's crazy. But I, I just I just wanted to let you know that, give you your flowers because, like I said, us us being from the East Coast, I mean, when it was that West Coast and East Coast beef, it was like I still was banging like the, the West Coast. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm a West Coast. I'm a West Coast fan. Even even though I'm from New York, I'm a West Coast fan. I wanted to touch on that a little bit. Like, like that whole East Coast West Coast beef. Do you think it could have went differently? Yeah, man, that shit was stupid, bro. I'm gonna tell you one, 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 one real thing. No people from the street took that shit serious, bro. That was that was only that was only rap dudes, man. Nobody from the streets was into that shit. We didn't really give a damn because we dealing with real shit. We we beefing with niggas around the corner from where we live. How can we think about beefing with some niggas way across the you know on the other side of the map? So we didn't take we never took that shit serious, bro. That was all hype and hoopla. Why do you think? Why do you think it got so out of out of control? Meaning, like, I mean, like I said, back then there was no social media, so all we was hearing was like stuff like in, in the magazines, the Vibe magazine. That's what it was. It was the media. You know, the media was blowing it up, and then you know, people had something to gain from it. People like Suge, people like Tupac. You know, they wanted to sell records, man. You know what I mean? So they was keeping it alive for that, for that purpose, and then the media naturally they were selling magazines and they was getting stories. You know, so. I think that's all it was, bro. Like, and then certain niggas, you know, niggas who was in in those crews was taking it serious. You know what I mean? But nobody else gave a fuck about that. Yo, we didn't I, care. I, never, I thought it, I thought it was really like that serious though. Nah, nah. Like, if it was, people would have. A lot of people would have died, bro. You know, like people like. Okay. I can't really speak on New York street shit because I don't know it like that. You know, I was only a visitor in New York, and I never stayed for no significant amount of time to really see how things run out there. But it down our way, bro, niggas be getting niggas be dying for nothing. You know what I mean? So like if that shit was serious, man, it would have been it would have been bad for people, bro. You know what I mean? Like so it wasn't serious. Like niggas didn't take that shit serious in the street. Yo, I knew I knew I knew California was different because um I got a homeboy from Cali, Mr. Tan. Um Okay. He from Cali and his father lived right next door to me in New York. And I remember when they came out for the summertime and they like Crips, so they came to New York, and it was a dude that from New York that was a blood. You know, New York, we ain't really like a gang affiliated city at that time. You know, Cali. Yeah, yeah. We went to the store. I, went, I never forget this. It was me and Tan, Mr. Tan. We went to the store with them, and we seen like a yo, little young blood dude, and he hit dude over the head with a forty bottle. Damn. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at him like, I'm looking at him like, dude, I gotta go to school with these niggas. Like, <laughs> he's like, nah, cuz we do this for real, yeah. bro. California. He's like, they doing it for fake out here. And I was like, dude, we in New York though. Like, if they want to bang, it's they want to bang. But I really realized how serious it was when when Mr. Tan, shout out to Mr. Tan, baby boy. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Yeah. Tan. I realized how serious it was when they used to come in town and they were serious. They wasn't like playing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, certain people was like that, man. You know, one thing about black folks is like, we all got family all over. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. East, yeah. West, down South. Some of us even out the country, you know what I mean? So that's how gangbanging pretty much kind of got around to all these other places because most of us got family in all these other places. And we would go there that's and the people fact. would like like that's the way how we act, the way we talk, see the colors we wear, and they would gravitate towards it, you know what I mean? But I remember when gangs came to New York, it was like around 94, I think. I was 1994. Gonna you, I was going to ask you that. Do you feel like... Do you feel like like California being the originator of all that? Do you feel like the other cities and states just they try to duplicate it, but they can never get it right? Because I always looked at it like there's nothing like Cali would have come out to the games. 
Yeah, but you know, every you can't expect you can't expect everybody to be exactly the same, bro. You know what I mean? That's expecting like everybody to rap like KRS One or everybody to rap like Grandmaster Flash. You know what I mean? Like so people gonna take things and do their own thing with it. But they they just as thorough, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> no, 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 I yeah. know I'm from other cities that, that that's battling. Like Yeah. But, but I I just always felt like 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 Cali was like the spot of the origin of everything, you know what I'm saying? I mean it is. It's just like hip hop so, is you know originated there, but it, it don't it don't make it no less than, you know what I'm saying? It's all love. I mean, it don't make it no less than. Like I know real niggas from New York that's I'm banging a, I'm and a, shit I'm that's Crips and. What you say now? That's a fact. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stay on I'm gonna stay on hip hop real fast. Um, in that era, in that, in that death row era, I know you's around for that era. Um, in Cali. Um, give me give me like a Suge Knight story. Something interesting about Suge Knight. If you could describe Suge Knight. Um, one thing I know about Suge, bro, to keep it real. When, whenever I encountered Shook, it was always love. Like, he never, Shook, Shook tried to bark one time, but it wasn't even directly towards me or my brother or anybody in our circle. It was it was him and Easy, because, you know, they knew each other prior to. Like, Shook was bodyguard. Okay. He was like a bodyguard in the industry before becoming a CEO. So he already knew. He knew Easy already. He knew Dre. He knew the DLC. You know what I mean? But I, I think, like, it was one time, right? It was a rumor that Suge had out on me and my brother. It was some dudes from, from Watts, from the Nickerson Gardens, right? And uh, it was this young dude. His name was Lil Stretch. And he was like, we pulled up by his neighborhood. We was in a lowrider. And we pulled by where he lived at. And he flagged us down. We backed up. And he was like, hey, man, y'all heard that shit Suge saying? We like, what? What you talking about? He's like, man, he going to slap y'all when he see y'all. Word? Why we see this nigga like the next week, right? Bye. So we doing a showcase at a, at a at a club downtown LA. We backstage. We don't know who's all inside the place. You know what I mean? We backstage chilling, smoking, drinking. And somebody came back there and said, Suge outside. We ran out there. You know what I'm saying? We seen him at the bar, him and all his bodyguards, Dr. Dre, everybody right there posted. We pushed right up on Suge. We was like, hey, homie, um, you supposed to slap us, my nigga? That nigga was like, no, man, I like you little niggas, man. Y'all want something to drink? Like, so that's how y'all, that's how he was. Like, he wasn't really, like, the, the reputation that other people seen of him, I never seen it, bro. I ain't gonna even lie. I ain't never seen Suge really bully nobody. I seen him beat up some nigga, one nigga one time. And I was like, by LAX, it was a little function, little industry thing going on. And when I pulled up, Suge and some other niggas was beating a dude up outside. I just seen him mixing. That was the only time I ever really seen him in some shit. Like, I never that's saw Suge in nothing like that. Huh? But that's crazy because Suge Knight probably has one of the most treacherous reputations. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like, everybody think he's just like the, the, the godfather of just like beating down everybody. I would have never, I, I always, like, you gotta understand, that's why I like to hear stories like this because you, like, the world thinks he's like the, like. Like, he a monster. He, yeah. He's really not, bro. He not, man. Suge wasn't, he wasn't even made that way, bro. Like, you know, he had niggas around him that was very, you know, like the, the dudes who he picked to be around him and hold him down, they were some real niggas, you know what I mean? So he had some real monsters around him. But him personally, that wasn't his character. I mean, it wasn't him. It wasn't any. Do you feel like, like, I'm going to stay on the West Wing. Do you, do you feel like the situation with Tupac could have been avoided? I mean, Tupac uh, Yeah, bro, it could have. You know, like, if Pac would have kept it, if Pac would have kept it off the street, bro, like, he wasn't he wasn't supposed to mix what he was into with that gang shit. You know what Ooh. I mean? Cause he know what comes with it. You know what I'm saying? Like Pac know he's been in LA too long not to know how shit go. Pac kind of grew up in Oakland. Oakland and LA, when it comes to the street, ain't no different. It's no different. There's killers out there. It's niggas that are hat. Niggas you can step on a nigga's shoe and nigga smoke you. Let alone you stump somebody out. You understand what I'm saying? So come on, bro. Like he know, bro. Like he wasn't supposed to mix that shit together, bro. Like that was that was his worst mistake. To be uh, real, I mean, cause cause we we you hear so much stuff about Tupac. Like I said, it's it's so many different things you hear about people. Um, I hear a lot. Of, I always I have different rappers on the show, different MCs on the show, and they, a lot of people say Tupac was one of the realest ever. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I remember when he got killed. I was I was so surprised he got killed. 
because usually when he go through something, he always bounce back. Yeah. Um, he, he, Super you know, resilient, got, got, for sure. I'm only got shot up in New York. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only got shot up in New York. Bounce, he kind of like bounced right back. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you, do you feel like when he passed away, it, it affected the whole hip-hop community? Absolutely it did, bro, because, it, you know, you know, I know you got to remember when they, you know, like all these people was coming out against hip hop back in the 90s, bro. They was trying to like do away with it. You remember? Yeah, remember. You had these reverends, you had these senators. Politicians. Yeah, all these people, yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, that just gave them exactly what they needed. You understand what I'm saying? And then you got one of the biggest guys That's in the industry. I, I yeah, so it's like, you know, yeah, it definitely put a damper on things and it, and it just really paved the way for them to, to make hip hop the way it is now. You know, it paved the way for for all these different elements to come in and kind of capitalize off of it, bro. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the, the street shit, the, the hip hop from the 90s, it was too real, bro. And, and it's kind of it's kind of yeah, fucked man. up because we kind of fucked it up. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, our fault yeah, because yeah. we was bringing the streets yeah. into to the business and we wasn't supposed to do that. You know what I mean? I was going to so, ask you that. I was like you guys are like you guys are the creators of all that. Like, yeah, bro, we I fucked mean, it up. Like, you know, I, I I have to say for a fact, you know, it's been it's been many occasions where I caused like Russell Simmons them Russell Simmons them to lose money, even though I didn't initiate the shit that happened. But it's the fact that, you know, that we ended up having these these fucking run ins and these fights and all this shit that was going on, people pulling out guns and you know, just making it fucked up, man. It was kinda it's it's mostly our fault, bro. Like to be real with you. That's crazy, man. Um, that that song, real Compton, like that song is like I said, a legendary song. I listen to it all the time, still to this day in two thousand twenty-one. Um, yeah. Are, are you you and Dre are cool now, right? Yeah, we've been cool, bro. Like we we don't necessarily talk and hang out and shit, but if we ever see each other, there ain't nothing but love. You know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, when when the song came out, was like, did you feel like it was a lot of pressure to come back at him like that? Like, like, was your whole thing, like, just to destroy everything? My whole, yeah, I mean, you know, that's how rap, you know, when you rapping, bro, like, we take shit serious. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so whatever we feeling, however, like, especially being a street nigga, I meant everything that I said at that time. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it was like, I guess the pressure for me was I had to kind of show out because that was my fucking debut. That was, that was, you know what I mean? Like, that was my entry into hip hop, into everybody knowing who I was, so I had to act a fool. And that's, you know, that's what I meant to do. Absolutely. Man, that's crazy. That's legendary, legendary. I was, like I said, I, I watched so many documentaries on the West Coast, and I hear so many different stories. That's why I said it was, it was good to talk to you, because I just wanted to get your, like, opinion on, like, a lot of things. Um, give me give me your opinion on Snoop Dogg. Like, do you feel like, do you feel like Snoop Dogg is the best MC from the West? Nah, not the Ooh. best. He's, he's one of them. I mean, he's He's definitely at the top of the list, you know what I mean? But we got other MCs, bro, in my opinion, who, you know, they don't really get the credit, like King T. Oh, King T, he's a legend, though. But he's a legend. We know who that is. But, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like King T is like the epitome of hip-hop, if you ask me, bro. And then you got you got real spitters. Like, you know, if we talking about lyricism, if we talking about shit like that, you got to go with Razzcast. You got to go with, like, you got to go with, like, Corrupt. Like, Corrupt used to show out on them records with Snoop Dogg, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like his shit was harder than a lot of that shit that they was spitting, bro. That Stranded on Death Row verse that Corrupt came in with. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, man. Like, you know? Um, there's some other people over here, too. They was pretty much underground, like Volume 10 and okay. all those type of cats. You know, uh, I don't know if you remember Old Girl Medusa. Uh-huh. I'm a hip-hop head, you know? yo. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we got some, we got some heavy hitters, but Snoop Dogg, I think Snoop Dogg overall, he was the whole, he was more of the whole package. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, he was, he was more likable. He was more marketable. And I think that's why his recognition got so big, you know, kind of overshadowed. And plus he had the, all that controversy with him going on at the time. He had the murder trial, you know what I mean? Like, so it was a lot, you know, where he got a lot of his fame from, if you ask me, but he was just so likable that, you know, everybody gravitated towards what he was doing. I'm, I'm gonna stay on the West for a minute. What, what do you think happened for the West Coast to kind of like decline a little bit after Death Row? You think it was just the decline of Death Row? Um, um, what do you think was the? Yeah, I just think like you. I think it was Death Row. I think it was easy first, and then 
And then Death Row. Yeah, because you didn't really have, you know, like Ruthless and Death Row was the biggest things we had over here. You know, they were independent powerhouses, right? Okay. All the other labels were the same thing that everybody else was signed to. It was either Def Jam, it was either uh, Priority Records Priority. or some shit. Yeah. yeah, all that type of shit. You know what I mean? So the majors didn't, they don't really care, bro. They only in it for the money. They don't really understand rap the way we do. They just like, is it going to sell? Is it going to make money? That's all they care about. You know what I mean? Because if you would have went to these labels back then, bro, they had a bunch of weird people, a and R in these places. Like, you know, like, it was just, it was kind of strange. But um, I think once those two labels, once they kind of fell by the wayside, yeah, it was nobody else there to carry the torch. You know what I mean? And, and you, then, you know. Who, who, like, from the West, you, like, if you driving right now, like, who, what young rappers from the West you probably bump right now? I'll bump like Kendrick. I'll bump Compton okay. AB. I'll bump my little homie okay. Geechee Gotti. Um, okay. I'll bump J. I'll bump J Stone, Nipsey Hustle, um, okay. shit like that. My my big brother, he got a lot of music that he ain't put out. Drake's to the gangster. Got a lot of mixtape shit like that. Um, just shit like that. Killer Twine from Watts. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yo, it's 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 interesting. I was um I was with my lady the other day and she was she was she's never met Nipsey Hustle, but she was telling me the impact like Nipsey Hustle like had on her. Oh and yeah. Was, yeah, like and it's like and I'm saying that because he had an impact on people that he never even seen or been around before. Like yeah. tell the world like the impact on Nipsey Hustle and like just the cause it, it's it's sad. You now I mean we know how to go on the streets, but at the end of the day, he he was a good dude. Yeah, he was a super good dude, man. He was, you got to think he was young, bro. He came into the game, figuring it out. He came into it like anybody else. He he kind of remind me of how, like, what Too Short and them did because how he came into the game, he was hustling his CDs. He would go places and post up and sell his CDs. You know what I mean? Like, in, in, in like, major places where, like, it was a lot of traffic and stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, and then he, he you know, he, he, he tried to, he tried to get up under certain people. Like, I remember seeing him at the studio with L.T. Hutton. Okay. I don't know if you know who L.T. Hutton is. He a producer in the, in the game mm -hmm. or whatnot. So I think L.T. did a lot of his first uh, stuff on his mix, his first mixtape and stuff like that. And, you know, he just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing, man. He just had a lot of determination and drive, more than what I've ever seen in people his age, bro. Like, he was, he was on one. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean, he had like a spiritual effect on people though, like. Cause absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Cause we saw, we saw him grow. We saw yeah. Nipsey come from the first thing he did to where he ended up at, like right before, you know, his demise, bro. Um, and it was amazing to witness, you know what I'm saying? It was amazing to witness. We, we witnessed him like, you know, having his, his t-shirt company outside with a table, you know, and just selling it hand to hand to get in the place that he was in front of selling the CD. You know what I mean? Like, wow. like that was hard, bro. Like being a youngster wow. from the street with no help. Yeah. No, no true guidance. Like that was, that was dope, man. I thought that was really dope. You know? That's a fact. I ain't going to hold you on here that much longer. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I'm going to put you on the spot real fast. Cause I know you're from, from the West. Um, what you feel about hip hop right now? Like just keep the, listen, listen, keep it a thousand. You're from the era where it's real, but let me know what you think about hip hop right now. Like, really? I, I I still love it, bro. Like, I love it just as much as I did then. I just think, like, right now it's too much of the same type of music. It's like they're they killing us with the same sound over and over and over. And then they're causing the new artists to think that that's what they have to do in order to get on. So, like, right now, the, the, the most sad part is that there's not enough diversity, if you ask me. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's the, the most bullshit part about it. But I think, you know, the fact that, that young black people, bro, who came from nothing made this industry, that's the dopest shit in the world, bro. There's nothing nobody can take from us, you know, when it comes to that. You know what I mean? Like, that shit is awesome. So, I mean, it still has a lot of potential, man. It's just people just got to get back to being originators. You know, get back to being original. Stop trying to fit in with everybody and do what you do. Did you, you know what I'm saying? Think, and, and be the best at it. Did you ever think hip hop would ever be this big? I mean, it was big to me when I came in, you know, like not when I was a kid. No, I didn't. Okay. But when I came in and I seen, you know, like you got to think, I'm, I'm from a little bitty 
place in a little bitty town, you know what I'm saying? And I never been nowhere before I got into hip hop, bro. I never went outside of Los Angeles anywhere. Wow. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and so yeah. from 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 coming from there and being able to go all over the world, come to come to New York, bro. Ride the train stations. Yeah, yeah, walk yeah. through Harlem. Walk through the Bronx. Walk through Brooklyn. Like that shit was hard, bro. Like that shit, right. it changed me forever. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. Man, that's a fact. Man, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna ask you one more question, man. You gotta give me. I don't know how you're going to figure this out, but you got to give me your top five MCs from the West. Who? My top five. Oh, don't include yourself. No order. No, 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 no. Um, damn, that's a, that's a cold one right there. I would, I would put my brother, I would put my brother Drace at the top. Facts. He's dope. Um, but then I would have to say like King T. Okay. Ice Cube. Okay. Corrupt. Ooh. Um, probably DJ Quick. Oh, shout out to DJ Quick. DJ yeah, Quick, Quick, and like, Quick don't really get he don't really get his credit either. You know what I mean? Oh man. Um, and Razcast, bro. I would say Razcast. Razcast. Okay, okay. Yeah, Raz is a monster, bro. Like man, Raz used to when I was a youngster, bro. I used to be listening to him. Like this nigga smart as hell. You know what I mean? Like, like he was raised right. You know what I'm saying? He had a good upbringing or something, bro. But yeah, I would say about them five, bro. Like. They definitely people that I look up to lyrically, for sure, for sure. Man, that's a fact, man. This is Say World Podcast. This is the infamous OG, BG Knockout. Anything else you want to say, my man? Man, I just want to salute you, bro, for bringing me on. And you know what I'm saying? I just tell you to keep doing your shit, man. Keep pushing and keep pushing the culture forward and keep having these conversations. And I hope the youngsters who are listening, man, just be original. If you're trying to do music, be yourself, man. Don't try to fit into these little categories that you know, you see it's being pushed on you so much. Do you. You know what I mean? And just be the best at what you do. And that's it. Man, this is a podcast. Peace out, my man. Much love. For sure.